we have a strange history of idolizing criminal masterminds. Even thieves who don't necessarily share their robbed riches with the poor, still seem to retain the adoration of fans, who live vicariously through their daring escapes with their looted money. Here is the top 5 biggest heist money never recovered. E.B. Cooper Hijacking A favorite among conspiracy theorists, D.B. Cooper performed the only unsolved air piracy act in American history. In November 1971, D.B. Cooper skyjacked Northwest Orient Airlines Flight 305, headed from Portland, Oregon, to Seattle Tacoma International Airport. About 30 minutes after takeoff, Cooper told a flight attendant he had explosive devices and demanded $200,000, four parachutes and a refueling truck upon landing at SeaTac. Indeed, once the plane landed, Cooper's requests were met, and he released the passengers before taking off with the pilot and a handful of crew members, for his desired destination of Mexico City. However, Cooper didn't intend to complete the journey. He strapped on a parachute and, from 10,000 feet in the air, jumped out of the plane into the night 30 minutes after taking off from SeaTac. Despite years of searches, and an ongoing FBI investigation, neither the body or money have ever been recovered. The assumption is that D.B. parachuted to an uncertain fate, but his case remains active at the Bureau for over 40 years, and has amassed 60 volumes of theories. The Plymouth Mail Truck Robbery 58 years after a mail truck was robbed of more than $1.5 million, in one of the largest holdups in state history, the crime remains unsolved. In August 1962, a team of criminals dressed as police officers and armed with guns, ambushed a mail truck traveling from Plymouth, Massachusetts, to the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. Using an elaborate scheme involving fake highway workers and traffic detours, the men got away with $1.5 million in cash, all in bills smaller than $20, and only some of it recorded in what was, at the time, the largest cash heist in history. The postal workers were blindfolded, bound and gagged, and put in the back of the truck. One of the men got in the driver's seat and drove for a while before abandoning the truck with the mailman still inside. But authorities believe there were six of them. U.S. Postal Service inspectors worked hand-in-hand -hand with the state police, FBI and other law enforcement agencies, and managed to uncover evidence from the homes of two of the criminals, as well as eyewitness testimony. A grand jury indicted three suspects, but the linchpin of the case, Tommy Richards, who was slated to testify against the others, disappeared mysteriously, never to be seen again. The remaining defendants were found not guilty, and the money was never recovered. Dunbar Robbery the largest cash robbery to have ever occurred in the USA also happened to be an inside job. In September 1997, at least six men stole $18.9 million in cash from the Dunbar Armored Truck Depot in Los Angeles. Their evening began at a house party in Long Beach, where they went to establish an alibi. But they sneaked out shortly thereafter, changed into black clothing, and drove to the depot, entering through a side door shortly after midnight. They tied up the few employees who were working and forced them to lie face down on the floor. As the LA Times reports, the armed robbers advanced on the vault area and, using bolt cutters, broke the padlocks on metal cages containing the depot's cash. Most of the currency consisted of $20 bills, destined for drop-offs at automated teller machines throughout the Los Angeles area. The robbers tossed the money into metal carts, which they wheeled to the building's loading dock, and dumped into a U-Haul truck that one of them had rented for the robbery. Before departing, they smashed all of the security video cameras inside the depot and seized the videotapes. The U-Haul was their undoing. Somehow, a plastic taillight lens fell off at the scene, which the FBI later matched to the rented U-Haul. The mastermind, Alan Pace III, was a former security officer for Dunbar, who was very familiar with the security process. He was convicted along with the rest of the group, four of whom pleaded guilty. While authorities recovered about $5 million of the cash in the form of homes, cars and other valuables, the remaining amount more than $10 million was never recovered. Benko Central Robbery the Guinness Book of World Records awarded this heist the title of greatest robbery of a bank, and the plot sounds like something straight out of a movie. In 2005, a group of men rented a property and set up shop posing as a landscape company a few blocks from the Banco Central. They spent three months digging a tunnel about 256 feet long and 13 feet below street level from their office to directly below the bank. Over the course of a weekend in August, they used the tunnel to get into the bank, and managed to avoid or disable all the bank sensors. From there, they broke through nearly four feet of steel-reinforced concrete to enter the vault, and stole five containers weighing more than 7,000 pounds, and holding about $70 million worth of reals, Brazilian currency. Bank employees didn't know anything had happened until they arrived at work Monday morning. And by then, the robbers had already fled the area. However, they made two mistakes that led to their demise. As a news report, police later find a large amount of white powder chalk the robbers had used to cover their fingerprints. And they nearly succeeded except for one print, their first slip. The second mistake. A member of the gang bought 10 cars at once the next day, paying cash and raising red flags in this poor region of Brazil. 
Improbably, the police managed to catch up with the trailer carrying those cars in another state, and inside three of the vehicles were bundles of 50 real bills. Three dozen people were accused of participating in the heist, 26 ended up in jail for various crimes, and a few of them escaped. But only about $8 million of the total amount was ever recovered. Making this the biggest robbery in the history of Brazil. The Great Train Robbery on August 8, 1963, a British mail train heading from Glasgow to London slowed for a red signal near the village of Cheddington, about 36 miles northwest of its destination. The train was stopped by tampered signals and attacked by a group of 15 robbers. The robbers didn't have guns, however, the train driver, Jack Mills, was struck on the head with an iron bar before running away with over 2.6 million pounds. They fled to a hideout, which police would later find and collect evidence from to prosecute most of the gang. However, the money was never recovered. Ringleaders were sentenced to 30 years in prison, including Ronald Arthur, Ronnie Biggs who later escaped, and Bruce Napoleon Reynolds, who went on to work as a consultant for a movie, and published the autobiography of a thief, the man behind the Great Train Robbery, in 1995. What do you think really happened to the robbed money? And what will you do if you find it? Let us know in the comments. Peace.